Douglas Robert Stuart Barger was born on the 21st of February 1910 to parents Frederick and Jesse Barger in St John's Wood, London. In the 1911 census, he was staying with relatives on the Isle of Wight as he was too young to return to the family home in Sakur, India. Less than a year later, after joining his parents, the family returned to England and settled for good in Kew, Surrey. His father was commissioned into the Royal Engineers and went to France in 1914. In 1917, Major Barder was badly wounded by shrapnel in his head and died from his wounds in Saint-Omer, France, five years later. When working for the Wargraves Commission, young Barder's fascination for flying came from his older sister's husband, Flight Lieutenant Cyril Francis Burge. And as a teenager, he would visit Cyril at his base in Cranwell. Barder joined the RAF as an officer cadet in 1928, aged 18. He was commissioned in 1930, but in December 1931, aged 21, while attempting aerobatics, Barder suffered terrible injuries when his plane crashed to the ground and exploded. Barder had to have both legs amputated. After a long recovery, Barder had learnt to walk again with artificial legs. He was very determined to fly again. The Central School of Flying reported that Barder could fly well but couldn't pass him fit enough to fly because there was nothing in the King's regulations that covered such an unusual case. So he was invalidated out of the RAF in 1933. With tensions rising in Europe, Barder reapplied to join the RAF and in November 1939 he was assessed to be fit for flying. Barder was assigned to 42 Squadron and involved in the Battle of France, becoming squadron leader during the Battle of Britain. At the end of 1940, 242 Squadron had destroyed 67 enemy aircraft for the loss of just six pilots. Squadron was awarded on Distinguished Service Order and nine Distinguished Flying Crosses. In March 1941, Barder was promoted to Wing Commander. He was stationed at RAF Tangmere, Sussex, with squadrons 145, 610, 616, all under his command. On the 9th of August, Barder flew with the 616 Squadron in his Spitfire and was involved in a dogfight at 30,000 feet over the coast of France. His plane was badly hit, he bailed out, losing his right artificial leg in the process. Three German soldiers found him and carried him to hospital in Saint-Omer, close to where his father was buried 20 years before. Barder asked the Germans to radio England and asked them to send over a second leg. His missing right leg had been found but was badly smashed, but repaired enough to wear. Barder made the first of three attempts to escape. On the 15th of August he was caught within 24 hours by the Luftwaffe and transferred to an Allied aircrew reception centre, where prisoners were interrogated, then sent to Stalag Luftkamp. Barder's disappearance had a lot of coverage in the press. With the permission of the Reich's Marshal Goering, the Luftwaffe radioed England for a new leg, providing an unrestricted access over St. Omer. The leg was sent in a Blenheim on a normal bombing raid on the night of the 19th of August 1941 at 15,000 feet, just south of St. Omer. The leg was dropped with stump, socks, powder, tobacco and chocolate. Reunited with his legs and not getting on with his captors, he was transferred to the officer's camp off Lag Vin Din und Lubeck, then left on to Stalag Free in Sagan. Here he met Captain Harry Day and Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm Pilot Jimmy Buckley. Day went on to be part of the Great Escape from Stalag Free in February 1943. Barder joined the escape committees in the camp. His escape attempts were restricted to goon baiting where he would attract the attention of his captors away from any escape operations. For example, when German troops strode past singing marching songs, he ordered men to whistle opposition tunes to put them out of step. Barder was desperate to escape. 
the escape committees had serious doubts about his success after two failed attempts. Bard was transferred to Old Flag Vic at Kolditz, where he stayed until the end of the war when the camp was liberated by US forces in April 1945. Upon liberation, he was encouraged to complete a liberation questionnaire, giving name, rank, number, unit, home address. These records can also include date and place of capture, main camps and hospitals and work camps, serious illness suffered whilst being imprisoned, medical treatment received, interrogation after capture, escape attempts, sabotage, suspicion of collaboration by other prisoners, and details of any bad treatment by the enemy to themselves or others. Bardo was knighted in 1976 and then sadly died of a heart attack aged 72 on the 5th of September 1982. Bardo will be remembered for a multitude of reasons, but it was for his service with disabled people, setting an example of how to overcome a disability. And he will always be remembered as the legless pilot of World War II. And for that, with a video like this, hopefully he will never be forgotten.